Hello and welcome to Stop Smoking Relaxation Hypnosis. My name is Jason Newland and my website is jasonnewland.com where my recordings live. You can download and stream all of my recordings for free. Uh, please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Now, this recording is going to be focusing on that hold that cigarettes may have over you. That bond, that connection, that whatever you want to call it. It could be, you know, there's a degree of strength that's there. Maybe it's a cord. Maybe it's a, uh, something like a, it can maybe feel almost like an iron rod that it's very difficult to remove. It's very difficult to, well, it may seem practically impossible to bend. And what you need to do is break it, break that iron bar. Now, by just going and trying to bend it, it's going to be fruitless. It's going to be uh, yeah, very difficult unless you're super, super duper strong. So what we're going to do, we're going to move around and play around with that bar, that iron bar that's currently iron. So I'd like you to close your eyes. And there may be background sounds, but it doesn't matter because this is not a sleep recording. This is a stop smoking or reducing your smoking relaxation session. So we're going to start by, as I said, closing your eyes, focusing on how you feel. And I want you to focus, first of all, on the most stressed part of your body. It might seem like a weird thing to do, but focus on the most stressed part. The part of you that feels the most uncomfortable. Maybe you feel tension in your forehead. Maybe the back of your neck, your lower back. With me, I tend to feel it in my lower back because I've got arthritis in my lower back. So I tend to hold a bit of tension there. Sometimes in my lower back, um, um, back of my neck, um, sometimes in my forehead, you know. So just focus on your body all the way from the top of your head down to your toes and just notice if there's a particular part of your body that feels the most tense. And just do that little body scan and Notice which part of you feels the most uncomfortable. And as you focus on that part, just that part, I want you to imagine that that's the iron bar that up till now may have seen seemed unbreakable, you know. I want you to focus on that part and just imagine that's the iron bar that needs to be changed and snapped, broken in order for you to move on with your life and to make whatever choices, decisions you choose to make regarding living a non-smoke life, a smoking free life, a healthy future. So this is something that will give you the choice. This is your choice. This is your decision. No one's making it for you and no one ever will make it for you. Even if a doctor or a loved one says you have to stop smoking, they won't make that decision for you unless they literally lock you up and hide all cigarettes and don't allow you to have access. No one's going to be able to stop you. Except you. You're the, you're the one 
who's in control of what you do, your behaviour. So this seemingly unbreakable habit, which we all know it's, it is breakable, um, just because maybe you've stopped in the past. Also, I imagine every single person watching this video or listening to the mp3 audio recording on a podcast knows somebody who has quit smoking who's decided to just let it go decided to stop doing that harm to yourself so they've decided to do that and you we all know someone like that they can be a bit annoying at times, you know, if they keep going on about it. You know, how easy it was for them. Oh, you should stop it. It's so easy. I did it. I stopped. Me, 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 me. It can be a bit annoying, especially when they almost start becoming almost religious about it. You know, like, you can do it. I can do it. So you can do it. Woo, 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 woo. So we all know those in annoying people but they you know, they might be well intentioned so you know and also if someone's nagging you or moaning at you complaining wanting you to stop smoking the chance is that they really care about you if a stranger does it they probably they don't get interested but if so is someone that's your partner your wife your child your parent uh, someone that genuinely cares about you and wants you to be around for a long time and they love you uh, so they're coming from a good space and some people have this idea you can't you can't stop smoking for someone else well you can in all fairness I mean if you want to be alive to see your three-year-old um, daughter or son maybe graduate from school or you want to be alive to see them maybe get married or you know or have children themselves then looking in the long term looking like 20 years ahead you might decide that the joy of being able to be in the lives of that small child that you pretty much worship you know there's that little child two-year-old child six-month-old child they're the most perfect little creature in the world to you probably so you're going to want to be around for them also most people have had people die you know and that's a horrible experience so to lose a parent or to lose someone that you, you know, really de care about deeply. So the idea of having or putting your child through that. I'm not trying to put you in a guilt trip. I'm just saying that, you know, it's reality. So sometimes you can think that way and think, well, you know what? Yeah, I want to stop because I want to be... Not just being alive, but you want to be healthy. I mean, you might, you know, we might all be alive in 30, 40 years time. I mean, I'll be 90 in 40 years to 92. Wow. 50, 60, 70, yeah, 92, 91 and a bit in 40 years. I don't know if that's going to happen. It's not really relevant to the recording. But I think if I was alive, I'd rather be able to breathe, you know? So stopping smoking, everyone's got their reason for deciding to stop. And it might be because you've got a brain, the intelligence part of your brain is just like saying, come on, we've known for... What, 70 years that cigarettes are bad for us? Before that, people didn't know. 
doctors were smoking in hospitals. They used to give <laughs> they used to give people cigarettes if they had a bad cough to help with their throat and help with their ch chest. But they didn't know back then. So you know, we know now. There's not ignorance isn't really uh, available to us regarding cigarettes. But it's a choice. We live in a society where you can choose to smoke or to not smoke. It's your choice. Just like I can choose to stop this recording and go and chase that pigeon in the garden and tell it to stop making so much noise. But I'm going to choose not to do that. So that metal bar, that like iron bar, is almost the strength of the addiction, strength of the habit, the strength of the, the want to do that particular thing, the connection. So as you focus on that part again that was stressed before, tense, just notice how that part of your body is feeling now just as we've just you know just been chatting for the last five minutes ten minutes or whatever notice how different it feels notice how it feels a bit more relaxed that part of your body Because sometimes just taking a bit of time out from your day, taking a bit of a break, stepping back a little bit from the situation that you're listening to the recording for, changes your perspective in a, maybe a really small way. yet maybe in a bigger way than you realised before you decided to listen to this recording, how much of a dent there already was in that metal bar. Because maybe that metal bar is already damaged, it's already weakened by years of maybe wanting to stop. And you've been kind of trying to bend it for years. And maybe it's it actually is weak. You just don't realise how weak it is because you're just looking at it. It looks strong, but maybe it isn't. Maybe it's like a tree. You know, you see a tree, it looks strong. But it might be rotten. 98% of it might be rotten inside. And actually, you could push the thing down. You wouldn't think to push it down. But a windy day, the thing just falls down because it's rotten inside. So maybe there's a, a big crack all the way through this metal rod, which, you know, we use as a representative of that smoking habit. So it felt strong before. How does it feel now? How does it feel right now? Focusing on that part of your body that was tense before. How is that part of your body feeling? Bearing in mind we're not really done anything. We're just chatting. And How does that part of your body feel? How relaxed do you feel? Because that sense of comfort just continues to grow. And there's something about taking a break, just taking a step back. Because relaxation comfort is actually our natural position to be in. It's our natural state to feel comfortable, to feel calm, to feel relaxed. That's natural. There's nothing weird about feeling relaxed. Nothing strange about feeling calm. 
it's actually our natural state. So when you sit down after a hard day's work, or you lie down on your bed at night, or whenever you go to bed, your body naturally starts to relax. Because that's what happens when we lay down, or when we sit down in a chair, our bodies start to relax. And some people listening to this, you may have listened to previous videos or previous relaxation or sleep podcasts. And there's that connection of listening to my boring voice maybe triggers that sense of calmness and relaxation to spread through your body. And your mind starts to become calmer, more peaceful. And then when you focus on that metal bar that represents the the strength of the smoking habit it starts to transform into something else it doesn't feel the same anymore why is that i don't know does it matter I don't know, does it, is it important why? But something changes, it doesn't feel the same. It's practically impossible to have the same, the same sense of almost powerlessness to this habit that maybe you used to feel you had in the past. I mean, perhaps you just decided yourself that you're not going to allow something external to control you. You know, you decided that's not acceptable anymore. Maybe, though, it's just happened naturally. You didn't plan to feel different. You didn't maybe even expect to feel different. Maybe you didn't even want to feel different. yet feel different you do and that might seem weird might seem a bit strange maybe slightly confusing as to why would you feel differently towards that thing that used to be strong but now is weak too weak to control you or too weak to to tell you what to do to the point where you may start to wonder like why how this why why would why would something that perhaps used to feel like it was controlling you suddenly after 
20 minutes. Doesn't have the power anymore. It's lost that energy. It's lost what it was. It's now something different. It's almost as if you've woken up to who you are and you've remembered your own strength. And you've remembered that you don't like being controlled. Not only do you not like it, you refuse to allow it to happen. And with that energy of thinking, that definiteness of the reality that you will not allow yourself to be controlled by a habit, by an outside thing, or an outside person. You start to remember that you are in control of what you do. You're in control of what you say. You're in control of your own behavior. You're not a puppet. You haven't got strings attached to your arms and your legs. And a puppeteer's controlling you from above. That's not happening. Or if you feel that way, cut those strings. Cut them now. And that freedom that you always knew you had anyway, is just, it's a reminder that you're free to do what you choose to do. But not to be controlled by something else, such as a habit. You're free to choose your own healthy behavior. And there's a, there's a certain sense of accomplishment that you can gain from embracing this feeling that you can experience inside. As you focus on that metal bar and you realize that actually it's not made of metal at all. All this time you thought it was made of metal, it's actually wood. Yeah, it's heavy wood. So that's why you thought it was, it was metal and it's hard and it's maybe been painted to look like metal, but it's just wood. And not only that, Inside, it's rotten. 98% of that wood all the way through is rotten. So that's not even a strong piece of wood. It's more like a twig. The strength of a twig. So you can pretty much just hold both ends and just snap it so easily without any effort or energy. But there's a certain feeling that you get when you do snap it. It's almost like just snapping a, a Kit Kat. And you can't put it back together again either. It's not Humpty Dumpty. This is, you know, it's gone. It's broken now. And as it breaks, it just, you can drop it on the floor. 
and it just starts to disintegrate it starts to just turn to dust you know like the old vampire movies the sun comes up and they just turn to dust that can be what happens to this twig that's on the floor realizing that It wasn't real. And maybe we were given too much emphasis to the, the power that we thought that that twig had over us. When, of course, if we'd realized it was just a twig, we wouldn't have uh, even given it any credit. What can a twig do? I suppose if it's long enough, you can scratch your back with it. And then as you focus on the rest of your body, noticing how much more relaxed you feel. Because not just that part that you were focusing on before, that's calmed down and loosened. It's just, not just your mind that's slowed down and as you focus on my voice and the words that I say, maybe you find yourself drifting, perhaps just through boredom Maybe you find listening to me a bit boring and you may find that you just want to fall asleep, which of course is your choice. And that sense of comfort spreading through your body. A sense of peace continuing to grow. And there's that, that feeling. You know that feeling when you know that something's changed. You know it. You might not be able to pinpoint exactly what it is that's changed. In this case, it's probably fairly easy, but... You have that feeling that you know that from now on things are going to be different. Things are going to be better. You're going to feel healthier. You're going to feel uh, you've got more energy. You're going to feel more positive about the future. Maybe start to make plans. For a happy life. A healthy life. It's quite interesting really, isn't it? How easily changes occur in our minds how simple movement can transform the way that you feel Horace the Pigeon agrees He's my biggest fan. And everyone make a recording, comes along, eats his popcorn, looks through the window. Hey, go on, JJ. You tell him. That's the only time I actually hope that you can hear the background sound. You might not be able to hear it, but there's a pigeon on my windowsill. 
it's lovely. So you can enjoy the feeling of comfort that continues to spread through your body. Your arms, your legs, your back, chest, stomach, your face, you know, your jaw, your eyes, your forehead, hands, fingers, feet and toes, relaxing and calm. And just allow any new learnings or changes to continue to be absorbed into your mind and your body, allowing those changes to happen in their own time. And you can enjoy feeling good. You can enjoy feeling relaxed. And you can enjoy whatever changes you've decided to allow. And that brings us to the end of this recording. If you're listening with on a, to a longer version on the podcast, there are versions with music in the background and also a five hour and a ten hour version. So you can just maybe drift off to sleep. So maybe if you're listening to that, enjoy feeling deeply, deeply relaxed. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Be gentle and enjoy being you. Lots of love. Bye.